Hey, Kevin here with a quick message before we get into the episode. About, I would say maybe halfway through uh, my chat with David today, there was a little bit of internet connectivity issues. Um, I noticed it on his video, which obviously you aren't seeing, but I did. There was a little bit of choppiness to his connection. Now, there are some words dropped as he's speaking about his business um, and his, his coaching approach and how he works with nonprofits and NGOs, his framework, et cetera. And there's a couple of moments where you lose just enough to maybe lose the thread of what he's saying, but it does not last very long. And it comes back on loud and clear. And he really does he really does tie everything together beautifully. Um, so I just wanted to give you that heads up that there's just around the, in the middle of the podcast, there's a, a 90 seconds, maybe two minutes or so, where you might be dropping a word here or there. Um, but rest assured, the message comes through loud and clear, in my opinion. And I hope you very much enjoy this episode. And if you do, please make sure to let David know on, on LinkedIn and on Facebook and let us know on all of our social media profiles, leave a comment, all that, all that good stuff. You know what to do about a podcast episode. Anyway, wanted to give you that heads up. Enjoy, and I will talk to you soon. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin. And today I'm I'm delighted and, and truly grateful to be able to share some time and spend some time getting to know and share with you David Morrison. Uh, David became an entrepreneur at around 30, and he has not looked back. He loves helping people serve their communities, yoga, and all things baseball, which is one of my one of my foundational sports. Some of my earliest memories with my dad in particular were of watching baseball together, so we have at least that part in common. Um, and in his own words, he, quote, rolls through life in a wheelchair, which I thought was just a, a delightfully lighthearted way um, to speak to your to who you are and your circumstances and how, you know, a, a key aspect of who, why you are who you are and who you've become. So, David, first of all, thank you for being here today. Thank you for sharing time and talking with me today. I'm excited to get to know you a little bit better. Thanks so much for having me, Kevin. It's my pleasure. Wonderful. Well, let's let's begin usually, where we usually begin, sort of at the beginning of not your entire journey, but of course it will encompass that. But begin with your journey as a coach, how you discovered that that was the way you wanted to impact the world. That was the way you wanted to serve people and serve their communities. How did you discover or realizing that or realize that coaching was the thing that you wanted to do or a thing that you wanted to do, a way that you wanted to contribute? Sure. So let me take a step back and kind of put things in context for the audience. I coach nonprofit organizations specifically. And I like to say that the reason I became a coach is because I had experience first. And then through that experience, I decided that I wanted to share knowledge with others. Hmm. So most people tend to go get their degree first and then go out into the world hmm. and get their practical experience. I was invited on the other hand, at the raw age of 18, to be part of not one, but two nonprofit organizations. So I got to see firsthand what that experience is like. And it's a whirlwind, let me tell you. <laughs> we took off and, and I assisted a team in raising over two million dollars for one of these projects wow. and mind you we had a number of positive relationships we had all the donors we could potentially ask for hmm. but there were some challenges too hmm. mainly we started in 2008 which, if you recall, was during an economic downturn. Mm -hmm. And so we saw a lot of resistance to the idea of bringing awareness to people with disabilities in my community. And so through that experience, I realized that, that working 
directly for an organization was going to be a monumental challenge. Hmm. But I had the personal expertise. I saw Bruce on the ground doing the true work that it takes to run a nonprofit. And so I decided to pivot, go back to school, get my master's degree in public administration with a focus in nonprofit management to the chagrin of my parents, I have to <laughs> add, because they were not happy to see me go straight into grad school. But mm -hmm. we we survived. It was <laughs> a team effort. And upon graduating in 2017, I immediately decided I wanted to coach others and share those experiences with the world. Hmm. That's lovely. Lovely. I love I love I love your journey through your your journey of discovery, the way that I feel like a lot of coaches have a have a similar story to you where they really what they learned about coaching, they learned just by experience, whether they were already in a different career or a different field, or whether they caught the bug early, whether they realized like you did very, very young that, oh, this, this, I want to work in this field. I want to impact the world in this way. And I love that you discovered so early that and, and got the opportunity to explore and to really like th throw yourself into it, the, the world of nonprofit, um, of nonprofits and how that, how powerful and impactful that can be to serve communities both in need and also in need of you know continued awareness and growth and you just you threw yourself into it and then got to a point where you know what now I have the opportunity and the time I'm going to go back to school I'm going to get that training and I love that like it's, it's sort of the reverse of what so many people think happens as they find their passion and they really pursue it and move through their life but I feel like I mean ultimately you arrive at the same location you have the skills and the training and you have the experience and you have the passion and you put it all together in a way that really allows you to, to impact the world. I keep coming back to impact, to impact the world, impact communities and impact individuals the way that you want to. Lovely. Definitely. Impact is, some would say my middle name because um, they truly believe that I'm in this world to have an impact. And like you said, I've had plenty of opportunity to to do that hmm. lovely I, I like the idea of david impact morris and it makes you almost makes you sound like a boxer <laughs> no pun intended with you know the boxer <laughs> the boxer media I, I didn't mean to do that but as soon as you said that it's like it's, some have said impact is my middle name i was like oh that's actually a pretty good that's pre a pretty good nickname i like that <laughs> let's uh let's talk a little bit about, I mean, I mean, obviously your journey began a long time ago and you are where you are today. Let's talk about your coaching business, your consulting business today and what that looks like. I like to ask this question as kind of a two-parter because I feel like it gets at, gets at the whole, you know, reason for what you're doing. Who, who do you coach? Who do you focus on coaching and serving? And that, that could be a particular, particular age group or demographic, a particular industry or industries, a particular like uh, professional, you know, sort of corporate la ladder level, whereas some people will work with middle management, some people focus on executives and C-suite executives, some people focus on different areas of a career, different locations on a ladder, so to speak. Um, so who do you coach and how do you coach them? What's your primary or preferred methodology? Do you largely work one-on-one? -on -one? Do you work a lot with group coaching and teams? Do you do any sort of like coursework? Have, have you written a book or are you going to write a book? It's what, I feel like I ask that question with a smile on my face every time because I feel like almost every coach either already has written a book, is a, writing a book or one's about to come out, you know? So basically, who do you coach? Who do you serve? And how do you serve them today? So let me drill down a little deeper. So I mentioned that I coach nonprofits, specifically my target audience is human services organizations. And because of the plethora of non-governmental organizations in my region, 
I've managed to get even more specific with that. It's only to work with startups and or nonprofits. So they have to be at least five years old or younger to qualify for my services. And I typically coach on an individual basis, as you mentioned. Um, I do run workshops and trainings local community colleges. Those are a separate revenue stream hmm. for me. My coaching business specifically is usually on an individual basis. Sometimes if an organization is a little more established, I may be working with a small board of directors hmm. to develop their governance model or something like that. But that's a very rare occasion. Most of my work to focus on the beginning, the form and the development of a structure behind the nonprofit. And I get into a lot of conversations about are you full that nonprofit is the pathway for you. And we're talking a very high level conversation with a lot of these individuals. And typically, my goal is to have a meeting, to have them take some time to absorb what we've talked about. And then they may come back to me and say, oh, we're ready to do this. What do we need to do to form? How do we put together our board? Do we need to start grant writing those sub questions? Hmm. It's an ongoing process. It's not as if I have one meeting with the client, and then we're done. Usually it's over the course of several conversations, and we develop a true relationship, and that's really why I love what I do, is I get to see their ideas. It's lovely. I, the way the way you describe your approach, I, I mean, I can, I, I have no personal experience with, with NGOs and nonprofits, and so but what I do know is that it, it, or at least what I can tell certainly from our conversation is that there are so many details. There's so much that goes into structuring things and doing things right. And that your role, and I, it, you can tell, you can see this just by like one glance at your LinkedIn profile. You have, you have the consultant hat and the advisor hat and the coach hat. It's really like your, your approach is very much a hybrid of you have the frameworks, you have the expertise and the understanding of the real details. Like the, like you were saying, the boots on the ground, like, you have to get these 27 things dialed in. Here's how you do it. And you have a plan that comes with that. And you stick with these, these people who you're advising, who you're coaching. And you go back and forth and you kind of develop an understanding, not only of the specific tactics that have to be approached and executed, but also the strategy behind launching a successful nonprofit, launching a successful NGO, and everything that goes along with that. So there's it seems like your approach is very much a hybrid of what some people might call advising or or um, consulting and a real co sort of coaching relationship where you walk through together with them and guide them to where they want to go. It definitely is. And if I could speak from the reasoning behind that, um, hmm. and that is because running a nonprofit is not easy. So I want clients to understand from we're here together, we're going through this process that is coaching out and you're in the world doing good. That same cycle of, okay, I need to check in with my board. I need to raise funds. I need to 
have relationship with my constituents. All of those things are going to continue even when I'm no longer involved and I feel like the client needs to be prepared for all of those situations. And so I've been told numerous times that my approach is, is methodical and, and sometimes too intense for folks. Hmm. But I, I stick behind it. I have a reason for, for doing it the way that we go through the process. And most of the time, they're going to come out as a stronger nonprofit. I'm so glad you said that because that that comes up sometimes in some of my conversations with some coaches, but I don't think it comes up enough. It's going to be hard. <laughs> the, the, the process is going to be rigorous. You're not there to just make people feel good about things and then leave and watch them fall apart behind you. You're coming in to serve. You want these people to succeed. You care about their success from the jump. And so you're going to do, you're going to help them to do what it takes. And sometimes it's going to be hard. Sometimes it's going to be very rigorous. Sometimes the discipline is going to be very strict and you're going to have to do a lot of things in a very particular order in order to find success. And I think it's I think it's good to shine more of a light on that. Because I think people understand that things, you know, they have some level of understanding that the work will be difficult, but sometimes they don't know how difficult or in what way it will be difficult for them. And that I feel like for in my experience and in my personal strong opinion, that's one of the greatest benefits of having a coach like you is that you're there as sort of an outsider, but and with tremendous expertise. And though you're an outsider, you care. You have come to care, you have come to serve, you have come to help because it matters to you, you're passionate. And so you really do get the best of all possible worlds in this relationship. And I, again, in my opinion, I'm sort of speaking speaking on behalf of your future clients. I just, I love that you that you don't shy away from the fact that the work will be challenging and it will be difficult and it will be worth it. And that you hold that standard for yourself and for your clients. I just, I admire that greatly. And I came into this industry with the idea that those are the clients who need the most. There are plenty of nonprofits with much higher budgets and much larger boards out there that understand the work that they do. And that's great. We can all have, you know, our own piece of impact in mm -hmm. this world. But it's those folks who really have no sense of where their idea falls in the spectrum. Those are the people that I'm really trying to reach and work mm. with. Lovely. I, I can't think of a better a better note to to end that part of the conversation on because that's perfect. I do. I want to make sure that people know where to find out more about you. <laughs> and this is my this is my final my final two part question. I always try to pack a lot of a lot of information into my questions as you can see. Um where can people if they want to just learn more about you and your work, who you are, what you do, why you do it, they just want to learn more, where can they best go to find that out? And if it's different, where can they go or what can they do to connect with you if they want to reach out, start a conversation and start a relationship with you? So you mentioned LinkedIn, and I'm glad you did, because that's a primary place where people can both learn more and connect with me. Um, I'm very active on LinkedIn, and um, we have a Facebook page as well, DF Morrison consulting were easy enough to find in, in both places. Excellent. Excellent. Well, David Impact, <laughs> David Impact Morrison, thank you. Thank you for sharing a little bit of time with me today. I, I'm really, I'm really grateful to get a chance to get to know you and I'm more grateful to get a chance to share you 
and your work and your reason and your passion for why you do the work you do with my audience. And I hope at some point in the future, well, I can have you on again. I would love to, I would love to keep the conversation going and maybe check in with you later on in the year, maybe as we're getting closer to the end of 2023 and see, see where things are at and how things are going. Then if that sounds good to you, I, I really enjoyed our time together and would love to talk to you again. It definitely does. And thank you so much. It's been a great conversation and I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you, David. And to the audience, I hope, I hope you got a, a, at least a piece of what I got out of this. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you connect with David on LinkedIn. It's, it's like, like he said, he's, he's very active there and pretty much that's the place you want to start. If you want to just get to know anything about David, his work, his journey, his passion, his impact, his reason for doing what he's doing. Quite frankly, just do yourself a favor and connect with him. <laughs> you won't regret it. You won't be sorry. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being with us today. I'm always grateful that you're listening to us. And we'll get a chance to talk to you again here on the podcast very, very soon.